Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 3 in the right console build. In this video we're going to look at the bulk of all of the panels from the right console now that they're fully built and ready for installation into the frame. Let's buckle up. All of the panels are now completed with the exception of the canopy panel and the lighting panel. Both of these panels are one that will be built when the right console frame is completed and all of the other panels are installed into it. We can see from the top left of the left console that there's an angular box and there's something similar that I'll design and 3D print for the top right of the right console and that's the one that's part of the canopy panel and that angular box there will contain the canopy jettison lever. And for the lighting panel, that will be the very last one to install. And it's almost that I can't really build that one fully, although the fascia's prepared at this point, until all of the other panels in place. Because at that point, I'll pull all of the back lighting from the left console and the front dash and the right console all through to a number of dimming units. And it's when that's in place that I'll then feed the lighting panel into those. But for the remainder of all the other panels, we'll take a moment to look at each of those now. So for each of them, in the top right of the screen, we'll see an image of the panel we'll be looking to replicate. In the bottom right, we'll see an image where I've rendered it in Fusion 360. But what I'm looking to really capture there is just the footprint of it, as in height, width, depth. It doesn't necessarily reflect every detail of the construction but just to get the footprint so later down the line when i design the right console in fusion i can test fit all of the panels and then on the left of the screen is a close-up of the panel constructed and we'll just rotate that the 360 degrees i'm pleased with the electric panel and it's a good step forward of its original prototype and that prototype was the first ever one I made for the sim pit. And at that point, I didn't even have a proper soldering iron. So as we can see now that the wires at that point were all held together with electrical tape. So it's nice to come back to these panels and redo them and remake them to a higher spec. So that's the first of the new panels all completed. Next up, we have the ILS panel. Again, this is one that was a version 2 and it follows on from an earlier prototype. The key difference with this is I swapped out the red 7 segment display for white. It's run on RS485 rather than IRQ serial. It's been widened so it can simply drop onto the mounting rails. And it's got a 3D printed trim that runs around the outside of the 7 segment display that we can see. And that hides that bleed of light. The AAP, very straightforward panel. The key thing with this one is the two locking toggles that we can see in the centre. And they're ones I took from a stripped down tornado panel. And I did a similar thing when I built the armament hood control panel. And I use a whole number of Real switches for that from tornado panels and they just ooze quality and give it a really great feel so straightforward and simple panel but a lot of fun to use next up is the tacan panel and with this one i'm loving that alphanumeric display and an oled would have worked in this case as well and I did use a lot of those in the front dash, but sometimes nothing beats a good seven segment, or in this case, a 14 segment display. Definitely has a really good look to it. As can be seen from this panel and several other ones shown to this point, that I have a, a quite a uniform approach to building these, where you have the fascia, the components mounted at the rear, a spacer a little bit further back with back lighting, and then beyond that, the mounting of the Arduinos to drive it. For the countermeasures panel, this again is a, a version 2. In the last video, we saw a side-by-side -side of this to the original prototype. 
And I have to say I'm really happy with the way this one's turned out. It's got a vacuum filled display, a real knob from a tornado, and it's got backlit push buttons. At the rear we can see here there's an extra number of DC input points because you've got the power to the vacuum filled display and then one set of power to the back backlighting strip and another to the backlit tactiles. So that should be a good addition to the sim pit. Next up is the Haas panel and this one's very straightforward. It, it's made up of just a couple of toggle switches, a potentiometer and I've put in a small servo unit. And it's worth mentioning again that for the right console it won't use in any way keyboard encoder which is something I had used in all other parts of the sim pit. This time round for the right console everything will be run over DCS BIOS and predominantly where possible or everything over an RS485 network. In all of my various tests I have found that most components run well on this kind of network and there are a few however that perhaps just need a bit more optimization to the Arduino code so for those whilst that's ongoing they can run at this point over IRQ serial. For the oxygen regulator I found that rather than adapting a real panel which I had sourced previously it just worked better to use the standard design approach to this as we can see on screen. The caution light panel is also a version 2 and following on from the prototype I did what I was really looking for now is to have two LEDs per window as opposed to the original one and that just ensures that when illuminated all of the text is clear and visible. For anyone that's looking to build one of these, the rear of it does not need to extend back as far as you can see here or be as involved from a, a wiring point of view. The approach taken here is that for each two LEDs, for each warning, they're wired into an individual Arduino pin per one. Using a matrix approach such as 7219 would obviously greatly reduce the amount of wiring here. And in this case here, the wiring was run into multiple slaves to spread the load of driving all the LEDs. But with further optimization needed to the code to run this, as a temporary measure, I've pulled all of that wiring into an Arduino Mega, which is run over IRQ serial. For the CDU here, this is one which is really comprised of two key parts. You've got the keypad and the display. And as we look at the rear of this now, well, you can see on the back a note. I often write notes to myself, so if I revisit something in the future, it's very clear how it's set up. But in this case, the display is run via one Arduino Mega, and then the whole of the keypad, that's run into a separate Arduino Mega, and that one is run over the typical RS485 network. And it's worth mentioning again that one of the, the key benefits of using this type of network to drive the panels is, it's only one COM port on your computer per network and that network could support a whole heap of panels. We can see the environment panel on screen. So everything in the right console is replicated as per what's happening in the simulated environment with the exception of this environment panel has two gauges which you can see the installation of it but they'll be brought online later. And this will also be the case for the gauge for the oxygen regulator. But everything else is fully replicated. I did mention there'd be a couple of placeholders, and we can see one of these here, the recorder unit. And again, very straightforward to build because there's nothing really happening at the rear of this. There are just a couple of panels that aren't fully built yet. The first is the canopy panel, and the second is a lighting panel we can see here. Now this one is early doors, but we can start to see the thinking in terms of interfacing to the backlighting of the simpit by these multi-gang potentiometers, which can run a, a, a multiple number of dimmers per one and interface into the sim at the same time. But this ultimately will be a, re a really key panel because it will be so great to be able to use it to drive and control all of the backlighting. 
So that brings me to the end of the construction phase. And what we can see now is all of the panels all lined up eagerly awaiting their installation into the right console frame. And now starts the process of designing that console, which I'll do in Fusion 360. And I really can't wait till the right console is complete, because at that point, with the left and right console in place and the front dash, for the very first time, I'll be able to operate the A10C with all of its, all of its key controls at my fingertips. So in the next video in this series, we'll take some time to look at the design of the right console. Thanks for watching.